Before we really get into working with CSS variables, let's outline a few best practice rules in regard to naming conventions for CSS variables. Naming conventions for CSS variables can be helpful for maintaining consistency and clarity in your code. Here are some naming conventions that you might want to consider using. Choose names that are descriptive and reflect the purpose of the variable. For example, if you're defining a color value, you might want to use a name like primary color or text color. This can make your code more readable and self-documenting. CSS variables are case sensitive, so it's a good idea to use all lowercase letters to avoid confusion. Hyphens can be used to separate words within the variable names, like background-color or button-font-size. Whatever naming convention you choose, be consistent throughout your code. This can help make your code more organized and easier to maintain. You might choose a prefix for all of your variables with a specific string, such as dash dash, my dash, prefix dash, whatever. This can help distinguish your variables from other CSS properties and make it clear that they are custom properties. It can also help to avoid naming conflicts with variables from other libraries or frameworks. Overall, choosing a clear and consistent naming convention can make your CSS variables easier to understand and maintain, both for yourself and for other developers who may work on the code in the future. What we'll do here is we'll go ahead and set up several variables to use on this particular page. I'm going to begin by adding my primary font variable. I'll go ahead and write dash dash primary font and we'll set this to Tahoma, Verdana, and Sans Serif. I'm going to go ahead and hit return and we'll make some more variables. The next one that I'm going to use is going to be primary color. Then I'll specify a color for the secondary color and let's set a hex value for that. Next I'll set a variable for my background color. We'll make an accent color. I'll assign a variable for border color and we'll make a variable for border radius. Now that I have these in place, let's go ahead and utilize some of these on the various elements on this page. I'll start off by selecting my body. We're going to go ahead and specify background color. We'll use our variable of background dash color. Then I'll assign the main text color and for this we're going to use our secondary variable color. Next we'll assign our font family and we'll be using our primary font. Now let's move on and make a rule for H1. I'm going to set the color here to my primary color and we'll set margin top. Next let's move on to our H2. We'll use a color here of our secondary color and we'll set our margin top to 5 pixels. Next I'm going to target my container which is the class that I utilized on the article within main. Here we'll set a border and I'm going to use solid, one pixel, and then for the color, I'm going to use my variable. So I'll go ahead and plug in variable. We'll put dash dash, and we'll use our border color. Now let's use border radius. And once again, I'm going to use my variable. I'm going to set some margin and padding, and I'll set width. Finally, I'm going to make some styles for my link, which I've given a class of BTN. I'll set the background color to our primary color border radius, and we'll use our border radius variable. For text color, we're going to use our background color. I'm going to use cursor of pointer, and then we'll set some padding. And finally, I'll add a transition of background color, 0.3 seconds and ease. Let's add a text decoration of none. And finally, I'm going to make a rule for my BTN colon hover, and we'll just go ahead and change the background color when the button is hovered over. I'm going to set this to my variable and we'll use our accent color here. Let's give this a save and if we refresh our page you're going to see that all of the changes that we've specified are showing up on the page and many of the properties are being controlled by our variables. As you can see the names of all my variables are using a consistent format I'm keeping everything lowercase and I'm using the hyphens to separate out separate words and it's really easy to see where everything is being used. 
An advantage of using the CSS variables is that I can easily go in here and make any change very quickly. So let's just say I don't want to use this blue anymore. I want to change this to a different color. All I have to do is simply change this hex value. Let's go ahead and change this to more of a teal. All I have to do is save my page and if we refresh, all instances of that particular color are now updated. As you can see, instead of naming this bright blue, I have primary color, which is more descriptive in case I want to ever change that color. It's recommended that you don't name colors that describe what they look like, but rather their function on the page.